As the weather heats up, so does the action on the pitch. Welcome to the J1 League Goal Zone. We're halfway into the J1 season and with a title race that is rip-roaring in top gear, you can count on us to bring you all of the action from Japan. Match Week 18 sees a top four clash in Yokohama, with the Marinos hosting Kashiwa. Kawasaki were at home to play Jubilo, while the Antlers made a road trip to Nagoya. Kobe were up against Urawa, and Kyoto were at home against Shona. A contest between two of the top four to start the weekend, with the league leaders on a three-game winning streak. The visitors were on a similar run, and with Raysol having taken the reverse fixture 3-1, the Marinos will be looking for some payback this time around. Here's Shazan Hack. I like the way they're playing. And that wasn't too far away, was it? That loops over the keeper. Oh, it didn't look like it was going to be a problem. Nishimura breaks the deadlock. It's sixth goal of the season. And Sasaki can only look on in despair. Koga. Now they can make it two. Well, well, well. Defensive woes at the moment. They've just switched off, haven't they, Kashimo Resol, and it's gone from bad to worse. There you go, simple tap in there for Leo Ciara. Only his third goal of the season, the man from Victoria. Looking for a bit of movement here, Matsubara. Ciara, chest it down. Oh, he's got the freedom there, and it's all too easy again. How's he got through that defence? Scott Mizunuma doesn't care. He's got the third goal. He's absolutely smashed that in for his fourth of the campaign. And they are rampant now. Yokohama F. Marinos, 3 0 up. Start of the second half right now. They've got a negotiator, a free kick here. Castro de Salt. a good ball in and it's bundled into the goal. What a nightmare of a start for Castro Reysol. They're the ones who desperately needed a goal at the start of the second half. But it's Yokohama F. Marinos who make it four. And a puff of the cheeks here from Nelsinho. And uh, pretty much put Castro Reysol out of his misery, which he proceeds to do. Right now, Leo Ciara has two goals. Kota Mizunuma also with one, as well as Takuma Nishimura. They have dominated this match from start to finish. The final score here at the Nissan Stadium. It's Yokohama F. Marinos 4, Kashua Reysol 0. Yeah, the result is obviously very, very pleasing, but um, it's the manner that we achieve the result. Uh, performance was uh, excellent for large parts of the game. The performance was excellent. Our first half was so dominant, uh, and we only had a short time to prepare. Uh, so the staff uh, fantastic in the preparations, and the, the players performed really well. Avispa's poor run of form continued as they went down to Shimizu last time out, leaving them without a win in three. Their opponents came into this contest unbeaten in five and certainly looked capable of collecting another victory here. Avispa with a chance from the corner just after the quarter hour mark, and they came desperately close. Shun Nakamura outswinging this one, Yuya Yamagishi getting there first, but his header glanced just beyond the far post. Looking to build on that in the 28th minute, they gave the ball away in their own half. Ben Khalifa retrieves it, makes a lovely pass to his right, and Makoto Mitsuta with a beautiful finish from just inside the penalty area. Avispa, though, were still dangerous. Here they are in the 30-minute mark. Takaki Shichi's left-footed cross gets a defensive touch, but Yota Maejima gets on the end of it, but guides his right-footed volley just wide of the upright. That home team pressure would pay off, though. Eight minutes before the break, 
Good sweeping football in the middle of the park, culminating in another Shichi cross. Daiki Watari makes a run between the defenders, gets his head to the ball, and that's your equaliser. Just 13 minutes left to play now, and it's still all square. Sanfrecce in control, and a masterful ball from Gakuto Notsuda. Over the top to Douglas Vieira. He lobs the goalkeeper, and the visitors are 2-1 up. This time, they weren't about to let their lead slip. With five minutes to play, Sho Sazaki's brought down by Yuri Crew. The referee sees that as a clumsy challenge from behind, points to the spot, and Vieira's stuttering run gives him a second goal of the night and San Frecce a 3-1 win on the road. After failing to win their last three, Frontale made a spectacular return by thumping five past Consadole last week. They'd be looking to follow up with another positive performance when they played Jubilo. The visitors having no wins in six on the road. Rich Rosh and Rai has your commentary. Taken short to Tono. Comes out to Oshima. Lifted into the area. That's an important save. A header from Taniguchi. Requiring a save from Ryuki Miura. Wakizaka. Back to Oshima. Taniguchi. Lots of space to advance ahead of him. Picks out a lovely pass to Yamane. And that's a fine finish. They just get the overload down the right-hand side of the pitch. Have a look at that run from Miki Yamane. He's onside, there's no doubt about that. But what about that finish? A touch of class from Miki Yamane. Yukobayashi. In fact, I think that's what he was doing. You see on that replay, it's come off his shin. I don't think he meant that finish. Here's Endo. Sugimoto in space behind Frontale's midfield. Can't make the most of it. Chanata burst forward here. Lovely first touch to take it past that defence. Oh, it's come off the post. A golden opportunity for Chanatip to get his first goal for Kawasaki Frontale. And the second for his side on the night. Endo lasting the pace, looking to deliver. Oh, it's looped in over Jung Sung Ryung. And they found the equaliser, Iwata. That one. His first of the season. Here's Kosuke Yamamoto. It's Iwata incredibly looking for the winner, Real Jermaine off the post. Oh, what an end to this game we're having. It's a delicious cross sent in by Yamamoto. On to the head of Real Jermaine. And it will be a point for the away side and an important one for a Jubilo Iwata team who come into this J1 campaign very much looking to consolidate their position in the top flight of Japanese football. It ends here at the Kawasaki Todoroki Stadium. Kawasaki Frontale 1, Jubilo Iwata 1. Two clubs here in a bit of a slump of late, with both sides having lost three in a row. Consadole had conceded at least four goals in their last three, and so the side that could plug their leaky defence should get the upper hand in this one. Mark Richmond has your commentary. It's very brittle in terms of their confidence defensively. Ball's broken clear. Flag hasn't gone up. Gabriel Xavier with an opportunity now, right on goal. Gabriel Xavier has put it into the back of the net. The flag has gone up now, unfortunately. Well, it was very late. Well, the ball's played right through, right there. Yep, just off Gabriel Xavier. Uh, there was some hope that he was in his own half, but he wasn't. And it's a correct decision. Aoki, still Aoki. Suga, told to cross it first time. It's left! Oh, yet again, a brilliant save by Higashiguchi. Komai has been very busy in this game. He's gone past a couple of players brilliantly. Komai. Paneko back to Komai! And he scores again against Gamba Osaka. Oh, finally, after 
343 minutes. Contadores Sapporo have a home goal against Gamba Osaka. And by the balance of things, they totally deserve this. This would be three undefeated against Gamba Osaka uh, for Contadore Sapporo and a much needed victory for them. The roars come out from the Sapporo Dome. Three losses in a row cancelled out now with a victory. Final score from the Sapporo Dome. It's 1-0 to the home side. First win in four games for Sapporo and they'd be pleased with the three points there. Time for us to take a break now. More highlights coming up from the Meiji Yasuda J1 League when we return. Good to have you back with us here on the second half of the J1 League Goal Zone. More stunning goals coming your way, so let's kick on with our next match up in Nagoya. After a second loss in a row for Grampus, they'd be keen to bounce back at home, a fortress where they'd only lost once in 17. The visitors would be looking to rewrite that streak, having lost once in their last five and gunning for top spot. An electrifying start for Nagoya. Ryoya Morishita teasing the defence, getting his body shaped up for a left-footed shot, but the goalkeeper Kwon Sun Tae with a strong hand to keep that one out. Just after the 19-minute mark, and Kashima make their way down the central channel. Ayase Ueda gets himself between the man and the goal, finishes well, but upon review, used his arm to get into a shooting position and the referee disallows that after having consulted VAR. Buoyed by their efforts, Kashima kept coming. Yuma Suzuki with a cross, way back there to the far post. Kaika's header is cleared off the line by Shinosuke Nakatani. And somehow the rebound isn't put over the line. But here comes the goal they deserve in the 33rd minute. Knocked down by Ueda. Hayato Nakama gets a big toe to that one, and the visitors are 1-0 up. That was the score at half-time, but seven minutes into the second half, Nagoya pressed for their equaliser. Sho Inagaki contorting his body to pull the ball back. In the process, it hits Diego Pituca's arm, and the referee, after a moment's hesitation, points to the spot. Although the goalkeeper chose the right way, Mateus Castro struck that one firmly and we're all tied up. Kashima now looking to retake their advantage from the dead ball. Kaika rises well, but can't quite keep the ball down well enough. Eight minutes later and a free kick in almost an identical position. Again, Kaika is the man to strike on goal, this time with his right foot and this time he's denied by the post. Would there be time for a winner? 93 minutes of football and there was one more chance left. Takuya Ushida gets to the byline, pulls it back for Yuki Soma, who has plenty of time to set himself up, but his strike is saved again by Kwon and we finish 1-1. Yeah, it's uh, always uh, important to play uh, very compact. Uh, we tried it, uh, but uh, they get uh, the second air with that penalty kick. Uh, it was a little bit early in the second half, but uh, yeah, afterwards uh, we suffered because they play at home, huh? uh, also with the fans in, in their back, uh, but uh, we created uh, again uh, two, three big goal chances. Uh, at the end, uh, I think uh, the draw is uh, okay for both teams. Cerezo failed to make it four straight wins after their most recent loss, but a chance to bounce back when Shimizu came to town. The visitors had finally collected a win after six games but were still hovering above the drop zone. The first chance fell to Cerezo inside the first 10 minutes. Mate Jonic with a header from the corner, Yuichi Gonda just tipping that one over the bar. 10 minutes before the break and Jonic would be involved at the other end of the field. A fantastic cross from Kenta Nishizawa, so difficult to defend in front of the defenders and the attackers, Jonic with little option to get some kind of touch on the ball, puts it into his own net. 
Into the second half now, well struck corner from Shimizu. Iichi Katayama with the header, and that one's comfortably saved by Kim Jin Hyun. Still looking for the first goal here in the 64th minute. Kakeru Funaki with his cross from the left hand side picks out Mutsuki Kato. Well saved by Gonda. 17 minutes left now. Cerezo's Kato takes the ball down nicely on his chest and a stinging shot saved again by the goalkeeper. Would Gonda finally be beaten by this 76th minute corner? An outswinger beautifully met by Funaki who snatches a draw for Cerezo. Two sides that finished in outstanding fashion last season are currently in the doldrums with Kobe parked at the bottom of the table and Urawa just two points clear of the drop zone before their encounter. A big three points at stake for both clubs then to get their season back on track. And what a start for Urawa. Kasper Juncker pressing hard in the opening 10 seconds, wins the ball but can't beat the post. It wasn't long before Vissel had a chance of their own. Tetsushi Yamakawa with a right-footed strike into the side netting. Kobe would come again midway through the first half. Koyo Yuruki clipping the ball into the danger zone. Yoshinori Muto seems to fly in his attempt to make contact, but can't get enough on it. Late into the second half now from the free kick, David Moberg with his left foot. Aya Maikawa with his left and right hand. But well, that was just a sight setter for Moberg. Look what happened in the 90th minute with everything on the line. The execution could hardly be more perfect. Coming off the underside of the crossbar, Urawa take all the points. Now, of course, it's uh, it was two teams you could see. They haven't made many goals and haven't had many points, but uh, it's so important to get the three points and we're so happy now. now of course, we have a uh, big work to do. Uh, we cannot be satisfied. We have many games more to go and, of course, we need to win more games. So we are really determined to, to turn the chip around. Kyoto's struggles continued as they were beaten by Kashima in their last fixture. The loss left them with just one win in eight and against an improving Shonan side who'd won three of their last four the scales could tip in favour of the visitors. It was Shonan who had the better of the early going. A pinpoint pass from Yusuke Segawa finds Masaki Ikeda, who puts the ball onto his left foot, but he can't quite beat Naoto Kamifukumoto in goal. The Shonan press on the last bank of four was working well, and it would set up another opportunity in the 13th minute. Ryo Takahashi releases the ball, Shuto Machino breaks free, he runs towards the keeper and finishes smartly, only to see the linesman with his flag up in the air. Machino had just crept into an offside position when the ball was played forward to him. Right in the middle of the first half at the other end of the field, Peter Utaka causing problems, the goalkeeper going walkabout and Utaka almost making him pay. On the cusp of half-time, Utaka collects the long ball, does the difficult job by rounding the keeper, but then hits the side netting. It would all have been to no avail though, Utaka had crept into another offside position. Ten minutes left and a gilt-edged chance for Shonan to take the points. Tarek on the edge of the box with plenty of time, Kami Fukumoto comes to the rescue. But the goalkeeper would have to brave another assault with three minutes left. Tiger Hata gets to the byline, pulls it back for Machino, who emphatically finishes for a dramatic last gasp winner. Saigon came into this one with one win from their last five, but a return to home turf would suit them well, having gone unbeaten in their last seven in Tosu. Tokyo had picked up a loss in their last round and with just one win from six on the road, could have it all to do in this contest. Here's Shazad again. From uh, Morishige, out wide. Watanabe. Lovely return ball, Watanabe. Can he get there first? 
And I'll turn! That's their best chance by far, FC Tokyo. That's much, much better. Park Yogyu deals with it pretty well. That was straight at the goalkeeper, effectively, wasn't it? Oh, carelessly given away. And they're looking to win it back immediately. No foul, says the referee. Iwasaki, Iwasaki! Oh, brilliant goal! From distance! They've been threatening earlier, Sago Tosu. FC Tokyo had just started getting into this match. And all of a sudden, it's Tosu who have taken the lead with a stunning goal. What a shot that is. Yet an earlier effort from range. Shimakawa has given the ball away. Nagai. Now Adelson. Lovely back heel. What a chance that is. That is a great opportunity. Here's Diego storming forward. Now Iwasaki. Does well to get the cross in. Diego! He hits that in! Big deflection along the way. The centre back, the marauding Brazilian, stayed up there with the attack for his very first goal ever in J League football, in J1. Well, that's taken it past Slovic, and that is a dream start to the second half for Sagan Tosu. Slip through. Honda! At the near post. Look at the space he had here. He cut inside. Oh, you can't be beating the goalkeeper at the near post like that. Oh, I think he was left rooted, didn't even have his hand out. Bit of a rovering roll. He's just looking frustrated as they come forward again. Koizumi slips that through. Oh, far post, and it's an easy tap in there. It is wonderful stuff we're seeing at the moment from Saga Tosu. Fuchi Honda, who's come on, has played a pivotal role in that. And now it's Kakita who gets on the score sheet. It all started with this. Just slow to get to the ball there. Aoki. Kakita. Kakita! What a goal. He arrows that into the far corner. And this is a rout now. What a brilliant strike from him. Well, they might want to think about making his move permanent, the way he's playing. Absolutely superb. And is there going to be more? Well, they're hungry. Oh, that slipped the crossbar. What a goal that could have been from Naoki Fujita. And that is the biggest defeat of the season so far for FC Tokyo at the hands of Sagan Tosu, who have been absolutely magnificent. It ends here at the Ekima Real Estate Stadium, Sagan Tosu 5, FC Tokyo 0. Here's a roundup of the scores from match week 18 then, with the Marinos resounding in victory. 4-0 over Kashiwa. San Frecce with another win, 3-1 over Avispa. Frontale held to a 1-1 draw by Jubilo, with Nagoya and Kashima, Cerezo and Shimizu sharing the same scoreline. Vissel failed to win again, this time losing 1-0 to Urawa. Yokohama keep their pace at the top, 37 points, and with a three-point lead over Kashima and Kawasaki. Sanfrecce moved into fourth on 30 points, and Sagan also move up a couple of notches, they are sixth on 27. Urawa moving closer into the top half with their win, in 10th and tied on points with Nagoya. Kyoto dropped into the bottom half after another loss and sit in 12th with three teams just a point behind. Gamba and Shimizu with the unfortunate honours of sitting in the drop zone after this round, both sides on 17 points, while Kobe are still firmly entrenched in last place.
With that, we've come to the end of another wonderful edition of the J1 League Goal Zone. You know where to find us for more of the same electrifying action. My name's Steve Dawson, and we'll see you next time.